trust is also a major issue at Stormont, and it was clearly missing on the day power sharing collapsed last month, but opinions differ as to why. Power sharing is essential if we're ever going to really make these institutions work. Where I am very critical of the two parties who've been in the castle for the last 10 years is that there hasn't been a mutual effort to build proper trust. And then that's reflected in our community where the two traditional halves have yet to build trust and are looking for the leadership to build that trust. And that is the solid foundation on which we can build political progress. And it's still missing now 19 years after the signing of the Belfast Agreement. But do the problems at Stormont go beyond issues of trust? Is there a flaw in the design of our political system that makes genuine power sharing an impossible task? Is it the case, as some argue, that the changes to the Good Friday Agreement at St Andrews turned power sharing into the sharing out of power? After the Good Friday Agreement, the DUP, Sinn Féin, the British government in particular, got together and eroded the principles of power sharing. And I think that's why we're in this situation today. For me, power sharing though, isn't just some sort of uh, construction where people have to work together. The spirit of power sharing is where people should work together. And that's why uh, you know, parties like mine and other parties uh, on other sides of the divide want to work together. I'm absolutely committed to power sharing, and our party is absolutely committed to power sharing. We struggled for a long time. Uh, to put it into place, but it's been eroded. Writer Mick Fealty is the founding editor of Slugger O2, one of Northern Ireland's leading political blogs. The system itself is rigid, and it has been made more rigid since the St Andrews Agreement. And what we have is a, an embedding of power in what is now called the Executive Office, and which was OFM, BFM. It invests an awful lot of power in, in the two parties that own those two offices. The first and deputy first ministers were originally elected by all MLAs, but under a change in the St Andrews Agreement, they are now nominated separately by the largest and second largest parties. It's kind of locked. It's given them no option other than to see themselves as adversaries. You know, the classic phrase from early, early days in 2007 was a battle a day. Now that has been taken so literally that it, that no neither neither of the major parties wants to be seen in the pockets of the other one that it has re it has led to complete stasis. The ability of of the two main parties to block each other has prevented progress, and I think it's it's taken away from the spirit of Good Friday Agreement, which was about cooperative working, consensus government. Instead, what we have is if we don't both agree, no one moves forward. I think we need to move forward. Despite the ups and downs, power sharing has enabled unionism and nationalism to work together. But some believe that it's achieved little else and has actually strengthened the divide at a political level. Take any subject, just look at our, our hospital services, uh, our waiting lists, uh, out of control. And yet we don't even have a budget from the 1st of April, so we can't tackle any of these things. This Stormont has had its day. Uh, no surprise to me, I've always said one day it would implode because it was built on sand, and I think that day might not have arrived. The problem with power sharing in the North is that it freezes the sectarian situation in the North. Power sharing is conceived, and the Good Friday talk and the rest of it doesn't consist in establishing a different form of a, a, a politics that both Orient and Green can adhere to. It acknowledges the difference. It requires the difference in order for it to work. There's no way that you could describe Northern Ireland as a classic example of classical democracy. It was from the very beginning a construct. It has been described as having the ugly scaffolding of democracy. And that's partly because it's been an enabling mechanism. It was felt necessary at the very beginning to create this stable condition. Is there something about power sharing that polarizes pol politics? I think in, in the terms that we have it, it is clearly 
polarizing because we have the designation system. What it creates is an incentive for people to flag up their nationalism or their unionism as the pr their primary their primary political quality. So uh, to some extent, yes, it has copper fastened um, the tribalism of Northern Irish politics. It was inevitably flawed because it was an entirely artificial form of politics. It was necessary, and I still think it is necessary, and uh, for a, a while it will remain necessary, but it is not a natural construct. For some, the collapse of power sharing at Stormont stems from a lack of genuine effort in trying to make it work. I think the spirit of power sharing has been lost quite a number of years ago. And what we have seen increasingly, I think, over um, the last number of years is a division of power, a carving up of power between power blocks, rather than a genuine sharing where they have shared, um, shared values, shared ambitions for Northern Ireland society and try to deliver them together. I think that has been exacerbated in some ways by the institutions. We can't put this down to institutional failure alone. There is a lack of goodwill and a lack of generosity. Has it worked in the spirit in which it was intended to? No, it hasn't worked in the spirit it was intended to, because if it worked in the spirit it intended to, it wouldn't have collapsed. We wouldn't have seen uh, the arrogance we've seen over this last number of months. Can it work? Yes, it can work. The agreements are there upon which it can work, but there has to be a change of attitude in terms of how political unionism adapts and works with its nationalist and republican neighbours. Northern Ireland needs stable government. We, as a party, have done all that we can to maintain government in the Northern Ireland Assembly so that the real issues like health, education and Brexit are addressed. But instead of trying to work with us, as we have done so many times in the past with Sinn Féin, uh, they have chosen to pursue political self-interest. They did not like the election results last May, and therefore they're looking to have another go at the election. The collapse of Stormont has coincided with momentous political uncertainty. Brexit has profound implications for Northern Ireland and its border with the Republic. Growing political tensions in the Republic may also cast a shadow over Stormont. Next week, Spotlight asks how and if power sharing can be put back together or has devolution as we know it run out of road. <laughs>